Welcome back to Uncensored Builds, where we figure out how to play your favorite fictional characters in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Like and subscribe for new builds every week, comment below to suggest your favorite fictional characters, and join the Patreon to vote in polls for upcoming videos. Today, to celebrate the end of an apocalyptic year, we're building the bringer of not one but two separate apocalypses, Vanya Hargreaves. Mostly because this is probably the first team I'm actually going to finish for the channel, but also because I'm not done gushing over Elliot Page. I would say spoilers ahead, but I kind of already gave away everything. Sorry. In case you didn't know, she's the secret 7th member of the Umbrella Academy, a team of childhood heroes all born under mysterious circumstances, adopted and trained by a mysterious alien masquerading as the Monopoly Man, all grown up to be wildly dysfunctional and estranged because how else could they end up? Vanya, surprisingly, grows up the most normal, convinced by her adoptive father that she was powerless, she plays the violin, has a cozy apartment, does music lessons on the side, and wrote a bestseller about what it's like to grow up normal in a superhero family. With whispers in her ear from her creepy stalker, she's convinced to stop taking her anti-charisma pills designed to suppress her powers. Look, I know this is just dumb superhero stuff, but mental health is a serious issue. If you've been prescribed medication and your boyfriend tells you to stop taking it, probably don't listen to him, okay? Professionals are professionals for a reason. Anyway, she stops taking her medicine, and surprise, surprise, she's not only the most powerful member of the team, but potentially the most powerful being on the planet. She's able to channel ambient sound waves to produce a wide array of effects from the typical force fields, telekinesis, and kinetic blasts up to entering a different form altogether that gives her complete energy manipulation, healing abilities, and limited telepathy, but at the cost of drastically reducing her empathy and emotions. Of course, that's not really a character bio as much as it is an introduction, but maybe you can piece together the plot over the next five Umbrella Academy videos I make. For our goals for this build, we need to be able to play the violin. Maybe not professionally, but enough to where people say, hey, you're pretty good at this. Second, we need to be able to control sound and use it as a weapon. Okay, that seems like a logical jump between goals. Lastly, we need to bring about the figurative end of the world that not even time travel can fix by literally bringing down the sky on our siblings. Because that's exactly what I expected to happen when we first saw Vanya channel her powers. Vanya is a human. The Hargreaves all have human mothers, at least even though we don't really know how they were conceived. Skilled humans gain two free ability boosts that we'll take in Charisma and Wisdom. They also get training in a skill of our choice that they become an expert in at level 5. So we'll grab Performance because it's the only thing that anyone ever encouraged her in. We'll take the Ward background because even though all the Hargreaves were adopted, she still somehow became the most adopted child. We'll take two more boosts in Charisma and Constitution. We also get training in Society and Genealogy. Your family is basically a single generation and you wrote a whole book about them. That's probably as close as I'll ever get to trying to justify genealogy lore. We also get the fascinating performance feat for free, meaning we can put our violin skills to use comparing a performance check to a target's will DC, fascinating them for one round on a success. We can also use this in combat to incapacitate an enemy, but only if we crit on the check, which has its uses, but our siblings rely on us for more than just a distraction. So let's grab an attack too. For our ancestry feat, adapted cantrip lets us prepare a cantrip of our choice from any list. Telekinetic projectile hurls an unattended object at an enemy as a spell attack roll, dealing 1d6 plus our spell casting modifier of bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage based on the object thrown. If you're one of the 18 people who watched my Allison video, I hinted she probably wouldn't be the only bard on the team. But I didn't specify who that other bard would be. Bards in Pathfinder are best at supporting the party, throwing out the occasional debuff, and being the goat of social encounters. It's definitely not Vanya though. I almost made Vanya as an intelligence or wisdom based caster, but the fact is that the meds she's taking to suppress her powers were also suppressing her emotions. That would definitely imply we're dealing with some kind of charisma caster. So, since she's also better with the violin without her meds and performance is also tied to charisma, we're going sorcerer because sometimes it just works. Level 1 sorcerers gain a boost of charisma and choose a bloodline as the source of their powers. Diabolic sorcerers gain training in deception and religion and also divine spells. Stabilize stops a dying creature from dying, but they stay at 0 HP. Forbidding Ward gives a target a plus 1 status bonus to AC, and saving throws from attacks and spells from a specific enemy. Harm damages living creatures who fail a 4 to 2 save based on how many actions you use to cast it. 1 action to deal 1d8 negative damage to a creature at touch range, 2 actions to deal 1d8 plus 8 damage to a creature within 30 feet, and 3 actions to deal 1d8 to all living creatures within a 30 foot emanation. Of course, this can also be used to heal undead creatures, but Vanya hasn't really encountered any of that that we know of. Ray of Enfeeblement gives the target the Enfeeble Condition, also based on a Fortitude save. We'll grab our free skills in Medicine, Nature, and Occultism, and take Ability Boost in Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma. We'll take the Impressive Performance feat to use our Performance skill instead of Diplomacy when making an impression. You're not really the face, but if you find yourself isolated for some reason, whip out that violin and impress. The Blessed Blood feat allows us to use deity spells as if they were on the divine list, so long as they're a deity we serve. 
Taking advantage right away by grabbing the shockwave spell to force a reflex save in a 15 foot cone. Creatures who fail get knocked prone and those who critically fail also take 1d6 damage. That's a spoiler for later in the build, but I've already given enough spoilers today, so you're just gonna have to wait a few levels. Level 3 Sorcerers gain signature spells for some added flexibility. For each level of spells we know, we can select one spell that we can heighten or reduce the level of freely. We still use the appropriate level spell slot when casting a spell, but as a spontaneous caster, this keeps us from needing to learn the same spells again and again each level. Speaking of learning spells, we get access to second level spell slots. Sound Burst finally gives us that missing sonic damage, forcing a fortitude save on creatures in a 10 foot burst dealing 2d10 sonic damage and stunning creatures who fail. Silence removes a creature's ability to produce any sounds whatsoever, meaning they can't be detected by hearing, deal any sonic damage, or use the verbal components of spells. Only problem is it's going to be used on a willing creature, so guess we were right to just straight up slit our sister's throat instead. We'll grab expert performance with our skill increase, since that's basically the only skill we use, and pick up adopted ancestry for our general feat so we can grab some halfling stuff along the line. Virtuosic Performer triples down on our only non-combat skill, giving us a plus one circumstance bonus on performance checks with stringed instruments. We got a taste of divine power from our bloodline, but now it's time to mainline that destructive power. The Claire Dedication allows us to devote ourselves to a deity, specifically Aerzul. That's how we got the Shockwave spell a couple of levels ago. Now we can grab more divine cantrips like Divine Lance, which gives us another option when enemies resist physical damage. Now we can make a spell attack and deal 2d4 plus our wisdom modifier of evil damage to a creature within 30 feet. We're already training our deity's divine skill and religion, so we'll take training in intimidation and arcana. Level 5 sorcerers gain magical fortitude for expert fortitude saves. We use our ability boost for dexterity, constitution, wisdom, and charisma, and we use our skill increase for expert occultism. We'll skip level 3 spells for now. There's nothing on the divine list that really fits Vanya here, so just go ahead and heighten sound burst in the meantime. For our ancestry feat easily dismissed lets us relive our childhood and most of our adulthood too. Now whenever we are in a crowd we can attempt to hide or sneak even while being observed. We don't actually become hidden or concealed. The people who can see us just stop caring until we do something out of the ordinary. Boy what a happy build. We were raised in a secret school so we'll grab schooled in secrets to use our occultism in place of diplomacy to gather information about other super powered almost 30s and the weird clandestine organizations we come in contact with. Domain Initiate gives us a focus point and the initial domain spell of our deity's domain. The Destruction Domain lets us channel the Apocalypse with the Cry of Destruction spell, forcing a fortitude save and a 15 foot cone, dealing 3d8 sonic damage to each unattended object and creature who fails. As a bonus, if we've already dealt damage this turn with a striker spell, we increase the damage die of this to d12s instead. Level 7 Sorcerers are expert spellcasters who can cast 4th level spells. Seal Fate gives a living creature weakness to our choice of acid, bludgeoning, sonic, electricity, fire, negative, piercing, slashing, or sonic damage based on a fortitude save. If they fail, not only do they gain the weakness of that type of damage for a minute, but they also instantly die if they are dropped to 0 HP by the damage of that type and are lower than level 7. You know, like all those commoners you killed. We'll use our skill increase for max performance and grab the toughness feat for additional max HP equal to our level and easier DCs on our recovery checks. Experienced Professional gives us the regular failure effects on critical fails when attempting to earn an income using our lore skill. We wrote one book with stopping us from writing another, other than the world breaking, time hopping, and amnesia that is. Cross-Blooded Evolution helps fill out our super weird spell list by allowing us to grab a spell from another tradition, but we can only have one such spell in our repertoire at a time. We finally grab a third level spell in Paralyze to paralyze a creature based on a will save. Level 9 Sorcerers get Lightning Reflexes for Expert Reflex saves. We get a skill increase we'll use for Expert Arcana, and we can cast 5th level spells. Shadow Blast deals 5d8 of our choice of Acid, Bludgeoning, Cold, Electricity, Fire, Force, Piercing, Slashing, or Sonic damage to enemies who fail a Reflex or Will save in a 30 foot cone, a 15 foot burst within 120 feet, or a 50 foot line. Now that we have all of the like 3 Sonic spells in the game, we aren't just Timid Little Vanya anymore. Now we're irrepressible, gaining a critical success whenever we roll a regular success on emotion effects. Not that your siblings would ever try to control you or anything. At level 10, we'll use our ability boost on our dexterity, constitution, wisdom, and charisma, and take the recognized spell feat to use our reaction to identify an incoming spell we saw the activation of. If we critically succeed, we also gain a plus 2 circumstance bonus to our AC or save against the incoming spell. Quick and casting allows us to once per day reduce the number of actions to cast one of our sorcerer spells by one to a minimum of one action, provided it's at least two levels lower than our highest spell slot. So now we can finally get that bonus damage off on our cry of destruction. Level 11 sorcerers gain alertness for expert perception, simple weapon expertise for expert proficiency in simple weapons, and a skill increase we'll use for master occultism and six level spells. 
Blade Barrier creates a 20 foot by 120 foot wall of force that provides cover and deals 78 force damage to creatures in its path and those that attempt to pass through, taking full damage and being knocked adjacent to the wall if they fail a reflex save. Incredible Initiative gives us a plus two circumstance bonus to all our initiative rolls. I feel like Vanya's reaction speed is ridiculous and none of the wiki pages I've looked at has said anything about it. Maybe that's just what happens when the brother you're close to is the one who can curve bullets. Your adoptive father was the only guy who had any idea how your powers worked and that guy's dead now. Bizarre magic increases the DCs to recognize spells we cast or identify magic we use by 5. Bloodline focus allows us to regain 2 focus points whenever we refocus instead of just 1. Level 13 sorcerers get weapon specialization for an additional flat 2 damage on our simple weapon attacks, defensive robes to increase our unarmored defense to expert proficiency, and a skill increase that we'll use for master arcana. We also get 7th level spells. Energy Aegis gives a creature resistance 5 to acid, cold, electricity, fire, force, negative, positive, and sonic damage for 24 hours. Unhampered Passage allows us to cast Freedom of Movement once per day as an innate spell. We can allow a creature to ignore effects that will reduce its speed and automatically escape from grabs or mobilizing effects for 10 minutes, since we're irrepressible and all. We'll grab the Quick Recognition feat so we can use our Recognize spell once per round as a free action, provided we're making the check using our Occultism or Arcana skills, since those are both Master Proficiency. We're going back and grabbing Safeguarded spell so we can spend an action to augment our next spell to be excluded from its effects even if we are in the area of the spell. Level 15 Sorcerers are Master Spellcasters who can cast 8 level spells. Divine Aura grants a plus 1 bonus to AC and saves and allies within a 10 foot emanation growing by 10 feet each time we sustain the spell for up to a minute. The bonus increases to plus 2 against attacks and spells cast by good creatures since we're casting this with the evil trait. Good creatures who hit on attacks within the area must also pass a will save or be blinded for 1 minute. We we'll use our skill increase for Legendary Occultism and grab the Feather Step feat allowing us to step in difficult terrain. Honestly, we could probably easily clear any debris with our cry of destruction at this point, but sometimes we just want to casually float over the obstructions instead. We use our ability boost to increase our dexterity, constitution, wisdom, and charisma. We'll pick up Creighton's cognitive crossover, selecting arcana and occultism in order to reattempt a failed recall knowledge check into either of these skills, using the other as reaction. All this stuff is just now coming back to her. The knowledge is there, the pathways are just a mess right now. Advanced Domain lets us tap into the source of destruction once again for another domain spell. Destructive Aura reduces the resistances of any creatures within a 15 foot emanation by 6 for 1 minute. Just be cautious, even if we safeguard ourselves, we'll still debuff any allies that get caught in our wake. Level 17 Sorcerers gain Resolve for Master Will Saves, we get a skill increase we'll use for Legendary Arcana, and we get 9th level spells. Meteor Swarm is Apocalypse 1. We force a reflex save on all creatures in 4 or 40 foot bursts within 500 feet that deal 6d10 bludgeoning damage within the center 10 foot area of each burst and 14d6 fire damage to everything in the area. Is there a bunch of time travelers who just avoided your moon meteor altogether? No worries, we have a backup apocalypse with Massacre. Each creature in a 60 foot line of 17th level of lore takes a fortitude save, creatures who succeed take 96 negative damage, creatures who fail take 100 negative damage, and those who critically fail die on the spot. Any creature whose HP is reduced to 0 by this spell also dies instantly, but if no creatures die, the spell feeds back and deals 30 damage to us, and 30 additional damage to every creature in the line, even if they are higher than level 17. With all that power at your fingertips, it can be difficult to remember that you've got more subtle abilities too. We're able to intuitively sense any beings we share our power with. Since allies upgrades our perception of any willing allies within 60 feet from undetected to simply hidden and the flat check to target willing allies within 60 feet who are hidden is now 5 instead of 11. We'll take assurance in our performance skill to forego the roll on any performance check in favor of a plus 10 proficiency bonus. If you're playing this at home, definitely feel free to take this much earlier, but we never get to see Vanya play violin in the second season and I hope they find time to bring that aspect of the character back in season 3. Okay, sorry, back to Pathfinder stuff now. Greater Cross-Blooded Evolution allows us to take two additional spells from our Cross-Blooded Evolution as long as they aren't in the same spell level. Fly gives the target a flying speed equal to its speed or 20 feet, whichever is greater, for one minute. Polar Ray is a spell attack against a single creature that on a success deals 10d8 cold damage and gives the target the drain condition. Level 19 Sorcerers are Legendary Spellcasters who gain a skill increase that we'll use for Legendary Performance and access to a 10th level spell slot. The most in-character thing we would likely be doing is heightening Massacre or Meteor Swarm, but using Miracle to replicate smaller effects from other spell lists is probably the real reason you have so many abilities on screen. One thing you have that there isn't really a spell for is Super Hearing, so we're grabbing Candy Acumen for Master Perception proficiency and getting our initiative a little higher so we're a little closer to bullet time reactions. At level 20, we'll take our final ability boost in Dexterity, Constitution, Wisdom, and Charisma. 
We learn to protect our family from danger even when we aren't around to shield them. Root Magic allows us to craft a small trinket and give it to an ally for the plus 3 status bonus on a save against the first spell or haunt they encounter that day. For our capstone feat, Bloodline Wellspring allows us to regain 3 focus points when refocusing instead of just 2 because Cry of Destruction is sweet and I want to do it as often as possible. Now that we're level 20, let's examine the pros and cons of this build. For starters, we've got a very diverse spell list rivaling the Polymath Bard or the Halcyon Wizard for versatility. We didn't even go over every bloodline and deity spell, but suffice to say, the amount of non-divine spells we know is staggering. We also aren't worried about enemy resistances to our specialized damage since destruction clerics can just nullify any resistances we come across. Lastly, even though we weren't trying to build a face, high charisma with legendary performance can still be a decent face for 85% of social encounters. For cons, our destruction abilities are powerful, but we've got to get dangerously close to use them, and even though we prioritize constitution, we're still a squishy unarmored sorcerer at the end of the day. Also, we don't really have anything other than performance and magic. Outside of those, you're kind of just the normal one again. But don't let that get you down. You're a sorcerer with a violin, not a bard. Leave diplomacy and deception stuff to Allison and Five, and just be there to bring down a nuke when they need it. Thanks for tuning in to another build. If you want to support the channel directly, why not join the Patreon? Patrons get to vote in all of our polls, download character sheets, and get their names featured in our videos. If any of that interests you, link is in the description. If that's not your cup of tea, then look no further because I've already got the perfect video for you to watch next right here.